This is Pat Solver with the Doctor Ways In, and I'm at MedEx, a fantastic conference on the Stanford campus. And I just came from an amazing panel, which was all about digital mental health. And I have with me today Arsha Bahabzadeh. Did I get that right? Absolutely wonderful. <laughs> okay, fantastic. I was really worried about that. And uh, he is really a renaissance man when it comes to psychiatry and digital mental health. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're up to? Thank you so much. Um, you said renaissance man, so I have a few different exciting things that I do. The first thing is that I'm a site director, a director of a company called Brainpower, and we build transformative wearable technologies on smart glass platforms like the one here for children with autism to learn crucial life skills. Uh, secondly, I'm actually a fully trained pediatric psychiatrist. I'm faculty at um, Mass General Hospital in Boston, and I'm the innovation officer for the Psychiatry Academy there. And finally, I'm the chairman of communications at the American Psychiatric Association's Council on Communications. Okay, so we know about the importance of sleep and mental health. I'm assuming you're not getting any. Sleep is sometimes <laughs> sometimes tricky. Um, I have to resort to coffee at times, but it gets me through. Okay, so what I wanted to talk about today is brain power, because um, I don't think I've ever heard anybody talking about using Google Glass to improve the functioning of kids with autism. So uh, the first thing that I think you should do is to tell us kind of exactly why you need to have the glasses and how you're using it for what skills. Okay, absolutely. I'll pro probably first start by saying that a lot of people with autism have some challenges in terms of how they interact with other people, in terms of making eye contact, recognizing emotions, making small talk and things like that. Now, what we have with smart glasses like this is the ability to record what people are seeing and doing and give them really crucial information back. So one of the things that we do, for example, is have a family of applications that helps them learn about eye contact, learn how to do eye contact using game-like experience that they actually see through the glass device while they're still interacting with their family members. Oh, so let me, so I want to drill down on that because sure. that's interesting. So if I'm the child with autism and I have my glasses on and I'm trying to interact with a family member, say my brother, right. okay, <clears throat> what am I seeing? Absolutely. So what you'll see, um, if you're, for example, trying to make eye contact, you will see something on the screen. If, if you're looking to the side, you would see something over your brother's face that's really engaging to you. So for example, if you like Angry Birds, you'll see an Angry Bird-like character that will suddenly be superimposed over your brother's face. You may not be looking at your brother, but when you see that in the corner of your eye, you may be interested. You may turn around, and as you turn around, you can find that character will disappear and you'll get a point. It's like a gamified experience that allows people to turn and make eye contact, but grabs their attention based on the things that they actually love to do. We see that in iPads, right? We see a lot of children with autism and other people love all these games and things like that that they play on iPads. But the challenge is that when you're using an iPad, you're looking down. You're disconnect. You're immersed in the iPad and disconnected from your family. So what we want to do is give this game-like experience to children while they're still engaging with their family members, because that emotional bond, that interaction with family members, is so powerful. Yeah, that's really interesting because I think we know that when I look at you, or when I look at my dog, or I look at my husband, that we get the release of oxytocin, you know, the so-called love hormone. Do you think anything like that's going on? Well, I think what we know is that there's an enormous amount of social information that's carried in the eye and nose and facial area. And if people aren't looking, they're missing out on that really crucial social information. If they miss out on it, how can they build the foundational um, uh, uh, the, the foundations of good social interaction right from the beginning. So what we want to do is let them look into faces, give them that opportunity, and allow them to teach themselves these core, core skills while remaining heads up, hands free, and connected to their families. Yeah, and I'm assuming if I'm the brother, right, and you're looking at me, that I get some positive from that because you're usually not looking at me. Absolutely. We want to ensure that every single member of the family 
gets a chance to interact in a positive way because it's all about building relationships while learning. And that's how we gear the software. And in terms of the team, I mean, we have um, our CEO is a very prominent uh, neuroscientist and we have clinicians like myself, we have engineers. And importantly, we actually have uh, interns and people with autism helping us to create this technology. Well, that's fantastic. Um, I have so many questions, but uh, I'm going to limit myself to a couple more. Uh, one of which is, have you done anything to show um, in a scientific way that what you're doing actually is improving outcomes? So, you make a good point. Evidence is extremely important. As a, a brain science-based company, one that takes science and technology and merges both, it's very important for us to actually show that our stuff works. So one of the first things that we've done is we've actually taken this technology to the people that will use it. We've taken it to people's homes, to schools, and a series of beta studies throughout the country, our own company's beta studies. And the response has been extraordinary. And I have a whole series of media that I can show you about people talking, professionals, families, and people with some talking about their experience with the software. But you mentioned evidence. And We've actually teamed up with um, neurotechnologists at Massachusetts General Hospital, with pediatric neurologists, and we'll be actually doing a clinical study using this technology firsthand to actually show um, how beneficial it could be. But our initial beta studies and the response that we have from real people that are actually using it um, has been extremely encouraging. Okay, well, I think that's great, but I do think um, for any technology com company, uh, you know, these health technology companies, actually getting some third-party mm -hmm. um, unbiased research done is so important, uh, first of all, for you as a company, but sure. secondly, to move the science forward. So that brings me to the next question, which is uh, funding, because I'm assuming that part of your business model may be that you would like to see health insurance companies pay for this if it turns out to be effective. And we know that health insurance companies have been really tough on um, paying for treatments for autism, you know, mm -hmm. the whole issue around uh, ABA therapy mm -hmm. um, and how a lot of them don't want to pay for it or they'll only pay for it until you're six years old or you're four years old or, w w you know, whatever. Um, how are you guys thinking about being able to monetize what you're doing? Sure. So the first point is that accessibility and scalability are incredibly important because the demand is so huge and the current services are so lacking. We're um, a privately backed company and we are actually looking to do a crowdfunding um, drive where we actually get the people that are going to use it, their families and members of the community that support our mission to help fund the technology. Our focus is staying on track in terms of our mission to actually create a product that's going to be useful and impactful in people's lives to teach them these crucial skills. And in that respect, I think the crowdfunding um, route at the moment is most appealing because it keeps us on mission and it keeps us on track. Oh, well, that's really interesting. So you're not so worried about having to make um, the traditional funders of healthcare happy. You're going to go really right to the customers by going via a, a crowdfund. Right. I think that's the people that are going to use it need to have the biggest voice in terms of how we develop the technology and how we, how we fund it. And that's part of our, part of our mission at BrainPower. So that's what we're going to aim to do. Okay. Well, I really want to thank you very much because it's an important topic. Um, we know how many children and family are affected by autism. And there's a huge need to have um, something that is, as you say, scalable, hopefully affordable, and uh, bottom line, effective. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. <music>